What we need to understand is that it's not, um, World War II isn't a children's storybook where there's people that are born evil and there's people that are born innocent and then they have this sort of epic clash with each other. I think that the lesson to be learned is how are people brought along from innocence into um, brutality. Didn't um, uh, have any preconceived ideas really. I, I, I spent a long time collecting information, actually in Auschwitz, meeting with Sofia Pozmisch, uh, reading a lot of material around the um, beginnings of the opera, how it was rediscovered. And in our case, the language was different than what had been performed before, going back, working with the original Russian, and seeing if there's any differences there, and if anything goes, um, anything else that can be brought to the forefront. And as I was doing that, then the invitation came from you to come to actually see the real places and to meet the real people. It was very special, it was very difficult emotionally um, to research, you know. It was like learning uh, a new language. Um, I read a lot about the subtleties of prisoners' uniforms and what every little detail meant. Um, because when you just look briefly at historical photographs, there is a danger to say, oh, they're all wearing striped uniforms, right? But it, when you spend one more minute on it, you realize that every single person looks a little bit differently. And so it was interesting to me why and how it became to be. And I started doing a lot of research through photographs, and I went to Jerusalem to Yad Vashem and um, did a lot of reading in Hebrew and English and in Russian, and anything I could find really to uh, learn as much as I can about the history of those clothes and then of course you know about the German uniforms as well it's like learning a language you have to understand what the insignia means and you know it's not just decorations it's it's actual status we worked really hard to make them as realistic as possible because it was very important to me that in our time of constant photography and filming, and we know that so much media gets out there, it was very important to me that they will look absolutely real in the biggest close-up. And uh, I think we've achieved that. There is an amazing team of tailors and artists here. We actually spent as much time building the uniforms as we spent distressing them and making them individually dirty and torn and bloody and painted in different shades. We spent that amount of time on it, so every single uniform um, has a different story. I thought it was really important to find uh, a way into the story and I think that we can't just look at it from the outside as this mass but because Sophia wrote this story from the inside and she said several times this is my individual story I'm not telling everybody's story I know what I know in my situation uh, I wanted to put myself in her place in a way how she might have seen or, or heard these these individual portraits when we're working in the rehearsals I keep calling each of the scenes portraits this is the portrait of Bronca, this is the portrait of Christina, this is the portrait of Iveta. And then you sort of have this family um, gallery that, that, that grows, and then you start to see how those um, sort of portraits interact with each other. Putting acting on stage and scenery on stage, it's an additive process. It's like, what can I design? I have to you know, make the beds, I have to make the barracks, make the chimneys, make the floor. It's, it's all about making stuff out of wood and steel and paint and, and cloth. And then you put the people on it and it's like, okay, I need you on stage, I need you on stage. And you have all these things there. But then you run the risk of not being able to find the story. And I think lighting is almost in, like in film when you're editing or doing close-ups and sort of changing the, the, the focus with the camera. What I then do with lighting, I think of it almost as a way of deleting or canceling some of the things that you've put on stage so that you know where to look. And as a director and a designer, to me those things go together really clearly because you can set up a whole barracks, maybe there's 50 women on stage at one point, but as very slowly it goes without even realizing it, all you see is one or two characters. 
uh, at a time and then you know where to focus and so even though you have a context for it um, you're not sort of overloaded with information and then it allows you to focus on the musical line and the text of that individual story. I think we're all passengers, uh, and I think that's the main point of this opera, to say that we're all humans and we're all passengers in the journey of life, and uh, we have to choose how to deal with circumstances once we experience them. And so that's why I chose as a costume designer at the very end of the opera to dress Marta and Lisa, who are the main characters of the opera, very similarly, but not identically, uh, is to show through costume is that there is similarity and that we don't quite know. And I think that that's, that's the main point. I think the journey is ours. For me, the, the last scene, sort of keeping it not in a kind of um, psychological netherland of this epilogue, you know, where does it exist? And I thought, in a way, it felt very comfortable to bring these two women back together somehow and to uh, allow them to, to look at each other. Because I think that the danger would be was, is to stop asking questions or to stop um, investigating your emotions or feelings or reactions to things. And so I wanted to bring this scene together at the end um, where it seems that there's a continuing dialogue with the people who have done us wrong. Um, and you know, we don't live in a world hopefully like Macbeth where blood is just more blood and more blood, but maybe there is uh, a chance through cultural dialogue to actually look in a mirror or through a porthole at your adversaries and maybe come to some more positive conclusions.